So for this video, I'm just gonna be recording this off my iPhone with some AirPods because I mean, it doesn't really matter to have anything else. So let's talk, let's talk about what's been happening these past few days as we've seen Luna go down from, I mean, just last week, I feel like it was at 90. And right now, as I talk to you, I mean, it's, it's, it's below $3. It's below three dollars now i don't want to spend too much time trying to drive dive into all the details as to what had happened or what some of the conspiracy theories out there were but the general gist of it well to try to kind of like put all this together is that the there was way too much on-chain liquidity compared to off-chain liquidity another way to kind of explain that is that the amount of usd that existed within the terror network natively was so much larger than the amount of USD that was on the order books at centralized exchanges such as Binance or KuCoin. Now, sure, there's there's been talk that there might be an institution out there that decided to, let's say, short Luna. And while they shorted Luna, they also spent some time gathering a lot of USD. And then they decided on one day, you know, let's start dumping Luna. I mean, start dumping USD. And, you know, when it comes to a stable coin, just getting it off the peg a little bit is enough to get people fearful, right? Just, just kind of getting it from a dollar to, to 99 cents, that's enough to kind of get the community talking and to get some people fearful of what's to come. So the belief is, yes, they, they started dumping a little bit on the centralized exchanges. And once there was some domino effect, once naturally other people started selling their USD, on these centralized exchanges. Then they just started putting in massive sell orders on Binance or on KuCoin. And by doing that, they made it incredibly difficult for UST to go back to the $1 peg. And naturally, the longer stablecoin stays off peg, the more fear there is built up. If it goes off peg for 10 minutes, okay, that wasn't great, but it's back on peg. If it's off peg for a day, two days, three days, I mean, I'm not sure how many days it's been now, maybe like five days or so, six days. TFL, Doan, LFG, they have not been able to get it on the peg. And a member of TFL on a Twitter space, they did end up, they did say that there simply is way too many sell orders on USD. And that no matter what attempts were made to try to buy up the, the, the cheap USD on Binance, for example, they were not able to push it up to one. And naturally, the longer USD has stayed on peg, the more fear had continued to happen. So yes, Luna is, uh, it's obviously, it's, it, to be honest, it's pretty done so at this point. At, I'm just gonna refresh the page right here to get the, yeah, I mean, it's $2.10. And I expect that by the time you're watching this video, by the way, that Luna will likely be much lower than this. So what happened to me personally, with my, with my positions, right? That I was at absolutely everything, well, for most of these days when UST was off peg and it was crashing down, I was holding up fine. I did have some loans out. I had a Mars Fields position opened up, in which case you do borrow USD. I also had uh, some USD that I borrowed on Red Bank using Luna as collateral. And as Luna was coming down in price and as those liquidation levels of mine were being challenged, um, I did have some other USD elsewhere that I was able to kind of move over and I was able to fight off any sort of liquidations. Fine, until last night. I woke up this morning, and I saw that Luna ended up hitting a price of around, uh, I think about $9, $10 at the very low. And it was bouncing around that range. And I saw that on Mars, I had about 470 Luna in there before I went to bed. It was only like 90 Luna was left in there. As a matter of fact, I could have easily lost all of it uh, because I was way above the, the liquidation level. It's just that I guess there was no one out there to even liquidate me to begin with. Now, that was, a, that was a significant stash, 470 Luna, because I had about 650 Luna going into, let's say, this week, or just two days ago. So that was the majority of it. And then I also had a, some C Luna left over. I think about 170 C Luna, which for those of you not aware of C Luna, that's basically a bonded form of Luna, but specifically on Prism. I apologize for these flies. I actually am currently staying on a farm. So yes, with the horses, with the goats, with the pigs, uh, the flies come with it. Anyhow, 170 C Luna, and uh, and obviously everything's off peg. So any of these derivatives of bonded forms, B Luna, C Luna, ST Luna, whatever you might think, it's obviously all severely off peg. Now, what really surprised me before I went to bed, I expected that Doan would come out and make some sort of statement, because yesterday he told us, "Hey, 
hang in there guys we got something coming up and nothing came overnight so naturally yes it makes sense that people just started dumping again overnight simply because there was nothing coming through in general i feel that lfg and doan their communication of us has been relatively scarce for the most part we haven't heard too much from them specifically in these last 72 hours now i know they've been working extremely hard at it and we there were some rumors that they were trying to raise money from some vcs you know they're offering vcs like 50 percent off uh, the current spot price for Luna, but I'm guessing those 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 talks kind of fell through. Those talks fell through. And the crazy thing is that even though those rumors were being circulated around, uh, even the fact that that rumor was around actually was leading to the price of Luna to come down in value. Uh, it was yesterday, and I think it was because they were trying to raise about I think somewhere around one billion dollars, and it just wasn't enough. Uh, some people crunched the numbers. They basically needed like billions not just one billion billions of dollars to help tr try to save usd because if i go too far into the peg mechanism we know that the only way usd can get on peg naturally is by minting a crap ton of luna in doing so uh, which gives the arbors obviously an incentive to try to burn usd mint luna and then sell the luna and so forth so th there was two ways about it it's either we let the market do its work and we let this peg come into to where it's supposed to be through this arbing or they are able to kind of get the needed funds that they need to buy up all the UST on these centralized exchanges, which is essentially putting downward pressure everywhere else. Naturally, centralized exchanges are needed because that's how people exit. If you want to turn your money into fiat, you need a centralized exchange to exit. And that's why it's so important to control that. You, you control the whole narrative by controlling the peg on, on Binance. We did see for most of these days, the peg on, on natively on Terra was fine. It was the peg on Binance that was a big issue. Um, let me just see where I was trying to go with it. So yes, so a billion dollars just wasn't enough. And, and we did see some, some turmoil coming from that. But I guess even that fell through. Even that fell through, which kind of spoke. And I think some people understood that, that it, that's also not coming through. And... With that, I mean, if, if the VC funds are looking at this and, and they're basically just writing this off because I've made videos in the past about VC funds. They were, they were, um, they were giving money to, to, to LFG and I think they were getting their Luna locked in at a price like a $53 and so forth. So, so we saw so much interest from, from venture capitalists that, that believed in Luna, that thought it had a massive future ahead of it, you know, and now at a price, I think, when these talks are being had about raising a billion dollars, I think Luna was trading at around like 25 to $30 at that point. They did not want to take that, even at a 50% uh, discount from that spot price, which would have been around like $15, which, yeah, naturally I, I could see why, because as I speak to you right now, Luna is at $2. So why did all this happen? Like, was there something that we did wrong, Terra did wrong, the community did wrong? And I truthfully think there is. And a lot of it does come back to one, one of the biggest things I've always criticized on this channel was actually Anchor and the fact that it's not sustainable. And unfortunately, Anchor actually began, was our Achilles heel and it ended up, ended up killing us here. That's what ended up happening. Because it was such an easy protocol for people to use, because it gave such a massive yield to people, we saw all of this growth on Terra. We saw people coming over and, and getting their hands on UST, which would get it off peg to the upside. And then Luna would be burned, pushing the price of Luna. And then we'd have more UST in the system. And then we had Doan or LFG replenishing the yield reserve. Once again, just pushing all this UST into people's hands. There was just way too much UST, which came from the fact that there was way too much of a focus on growth. That the idea was we need to increase the, the, the market cap of USD by, by, by a billion dollars every single month, no matter what. That it's okay that Anchor is unsustainable right now because it is a marketing campaign to bring adoption of Terra everywhere and, and USD to be used everywhere. And sure, I get that. It all made sense there. But it came at a massive cost. It came at a cost that there was too much USD in the system at this point to be able to, to get back on peg if we ever had a situation like this. Last year in May, when Luna first crashed from like $20 to below $5, 
Uh, the peg went to about 0.85 and then it recovered after some time. The particle was so much smaller. Uh, Anchor did not even have a billion dollars in deposits at that point. It was just a couple hundred million. USD's market cap was a billion dollars. USD's market cap was like 15x more. At the very minimum going into this event. It's so much more difficult to peg an asset that is 15 times more larger. And I know back then, Doan did reach out to VCs. He did cut them a deal, a favorable one, for the same reason. Hey, save us. Oh, we are off peg. We need money to get our, to get our currency back on peg. And yeah, they were saved back then. But this time, it just wasn't an option because they just need so much money to save the peg. So much money to save the peg. And the reason for that, again, just too much USD. So it's sad to see this, obviously. It's sad to see this. You know, Doan made a statement about an hour ago. And I was telling people in my Discord, because I've been listening to Twitter Spaces uh, for the past few days, and uh, there was a member from TFL talking. There'll be, there'll be a statement coming out, and that was the statement that Doan put out. And it was pretty clear at that point also that there's not going to be a bailout. There's going to be no no deal of any VCs out there. That This is it. The only way USD gets unpegged is through the typical mechanics that exist, the minting and the burning. That is it. LFG will not have any money, no USD in their pocket to buy up uh, USD on Binance, for example. Around the same time, uh, I mean, I, I basically sold whatever I had. I had some Sea as I said, 170. I sold it. Out. I mean, it was so off-pegged also. I think I sold it for like... 30% of a discount to Luna. So I think the average price I sold it for is about like $6. Which granted, again, I mean, Luna is trading at $2.20. So still sold it for much higher. So the reason I did that is because if we are going to allow things to, to heal naturally, it's going to require Luna to be stomped into the ground. There's just no two ways about it. There's going to be so much minting of Luna over these days, over these weeks. It could, this could even be months. That the only direction Luna can go down, Luna can go, is down. That's just the only way I see it. If the one pulls a rabbit out of his hat and manages to get enough funding, uh, sure, the bleeding can stop and there could be some some ground level for Luna. But if Luna trading at, at 220, I expect it to go down. I expect it to go below a dollar. I, listen, I wouldn't, you know, I, would, I wouldn't even be surprised to see it on the 10 cents. It's definitely in the cards. Only because this is required to get USD back on PEC. At the end of the day, Luna is not the most important asset on Terra. It's USD. USD is a prime asset on Terra. Everything else is built around it. So Luna is doing right now what it's supposed to do, which is help bring USD back to its PEC. Now, overall, all of this is kind of crazy to see, obviously. I mean, many people lost uh, you know, their life savings, which is crazy. And... Uh, if you're thinking about me, you know, thank you. Fortunately, it wasn't it wasn't my life savings. Uh, and just to kind of kind of share overall, I think I put about like twenty two thousand dollars into Terra last year. At the very height, it was about worth about seventy thousand dollars. And I think now the assets that are left over, um, maybe I have like two or three k left over, and then uh, some NFTs. So that's how my situation came out. So yeah, still, you know, it hurts, but it's not devastating. But I definitely feel for those of you out there that had considerably more money into the system. So yes, I do believe Luna will continue to go down. I'm not so bearish, I guess, on UST because as long as Luna has some value, there's always a path forward for UST to go back to its peg. It's gonna be, it's gonna be a long road ahead, but it's possible. It, it, it it's possible. Okay. So some of you might be holding onto some UST right now and it's worth, I don't know, like 40 cents on the dollar. You might be worried. Well, it's better to be better that than to be holding Luna. That, that's, that's without a doubt. So I do see that UST getting back to its peg given enough time. The one did mention that probably come the day that USD gets, gets back to its peg, they will uh, likely look to kind of collateralize it, at least semi-collateralize it to, to a point. So that's probably going to be in the cards at some point in the future. I may try to to buy the dip on Luna at some point or another. I think this is way too early to even be thinking about this. So if you're kind of sitting here and you have some UST and you're like, wow, I'm gonna, I'm gonna buy the bottom here. I think we're way too early in that process. There's a governance proposal right now on Anchor, 
which is meant to allow more burning and minting to occur within a single day, because that's one of the limitations that happened here too. There's a cap as how much can be burnt and minted within a single day. On top of that, as, as the burning and minting happens throughout the day, there's also a spread that starts happening. So most of us know about the idea that one USD should be should should get you one dollars worth of Luna. Well, it's like, it's not the case. It's not the case. That even throughout this limit that exists, that as as you climb up toward closer to the limit, the spread changes. So maybe a dollar worth one one so maybe one USD would get you ninety nine cents of Luna and so forth. So obviously at some point arbitrage will look at this and be like I don't even want to ARP this because the spread is so wide. I think the spread sometimes gets as wide as 20, 30%. So then USD is not even getting up to the peg. The mechanism itself is not even around uh, because no one wants to ARP it. But they do plan to change some of that with this new governance proposal. Obviously with this in place, um, it's bullish for USD because this is required to get USD back to its peg. Otherwise it's gonna take God knows how long to get it back up there. But it's bearish for Luna because this simply means that hey, I think I mean I think they're going to the point. Uh, I don't even want to bring it up, but it's definitely a humongous increase. So once this passes, once they implement this, we, we should expect a, a more more buying pressure on UST, and, and in a similar fashion, a lot more selling pressure on on Luna. Uh, as I make this video, I think maybe North America is waking up to this right now, kind of seeing the turmoil. Uh, I. I can still imagine there's some dip buyers out there looking at a $2 Luna and being like, I'm gonna buy this dip. But again, in my opinion, it's just way too early because right now the most important thing is to get USD back to its peg. So what's gonna happen with the rest of the assets on the rest of the protocols on Terra? Well, they can still exist. They can still exist, but all of this is still gonna be a massive hit to them. So if you own like Prism, for example, or, or Astro tokens, uh, they will also have value, but keep in mind their value is derived from activity. On, on their protocol. And if so many people are destroyed, like so much wealth has been destroyed during this crash, so much wealth. And obviously terror has become a laughing stock for many people in the crypto community. It's gonna be difficult to get people to come back on the terror community. There are people that, that got burned here that lost hundreds of thousands, millions of dollars who may not be able to reset that easily. At the very least that money's out, it's gone, right? The, peop the people that made all the profits right now, the vast majority of the profits during this crash, they're not they're not gonna be messing around in terror, right? They're not gonna be putting that money in prism or, or hash report or anything like that. No, no. They're taking it back into traditional finance. So we're gonna see a humongous contraction of volume that's gonna be occurring, which is gonna affect the underlying price of the tokens because a lot of times these tokens derive their value from the revenue that the protocol is making. I myself do own some X Prism right now. I did buy during this dip, unfortunately. Obviously, that wasn't the right decision to have been done. Um so same thing for, for, for Prism there, where the protocol can, can stay around, but is the token really going to have that much value when there's just not that much activity altogether? But in general, the Terra network, yes, it can continue to exist. It doesn't need Luna at $100 at all, okay? The Terra network can exist with Luna at fractions of a penny. Everything can still work exactly the same, per se. Like that, That's not going to change. The price of Luna does not change how the Terra network actually works. So that all that can still coexist. Uh, but yeah, it's been a tough, it's been it's been a tough few days. And you know, the crazy thing is they just came out of nowhere, right? Um, just came out of nowhere, just came out of nowhere. I mean, even my Discord, you know, we were, we were talking about the fact that, hey, listen, like in this bearish market in the equities, because equity market's been getting absolutely crushed too, that listen, even in that market, it's all going down, balloon is holding up while here at 80, 90 dollars and so forth. And then just like just like that, right? Just like that, everything just, just came crashing down. You know, I'm not sure what the future of this channel is gonna look like because obviously most of my content has, has been about Terra. I even had a video in queue that I already filmed and was in the midst of editing, which was kinetic, but I mean it doesn't even make sense to release it because there's obviously more issues, uh, more issues on, on, on hand right now. And maybe hopefully over the coming days we get more information about um, this whole debacle, right? And how it all began and, and what the weak points are. But it's clear that, you know, the biggest weak points was just us growing too quickly. And us not insulating ourselves from, from what would happen when there's just not enough liquidity on the centralized exchanges versus what is on, on chain. Now, I hope for those of you that are listening, uh, you are okay. 
Um, I know these losses, abs you know, they're, they're, they're very tough, tough to stomach. And I think it's very tough to stomach when it comes right away. So I think a lot of us are still in shock, like we're not even able to, to realize what's, what's actually happened. And I know some of you out there are still kind of very hopeful that, hey, listen, this is just a dip. This is just a regular dip. That I believe in everything, it's fine, let me buy this dip. And I wish I could say that's the case, but once you, once you kind of pull your emotion out of that and you look at things logically, rationally, there's no path forward for Luna that doesn't involve it going down. There just isn't. There just isn't. The, the last the last key thing we could have hung on was, was the one saying, hey, we managed to secure two, three, four billion dollars. Okay? That's what was needed. Anything except for that isn't good. And remember, UST, it's, it, when it comes to UST, it, it's, it's binary. It's either on peg or it's off peg. There's no in between. There's no in between. It doesn't matter if it's a 0.9 or 0.4. Obviously, 0.4 is worse. But if it's off peg, that does mean that that Luna has to be minted and it will be sold and the pressure is going to be there. And it could be off peg for a very long time. Very long time. There's no way for me to give you an estimate, but it could take a very long time and Luna will be taking that burden in the meantime. Yeah, I hope we have better days from now. Um, hopefully my video just tried to kind of piece everything together, what's happening. Um, but thank you for listening. You know, I'm not sure what the future of my channel is, as I've kind of begun saying before. Uh, I'll have to think about it. Maybe this will be the final video for the channel and the way it's structured and all. But thank you for watching. So for all of you out there, that subscribe, subscribe to me and you watch my videos, you comment it, you engage them. I just want to thank you for that. You know, unfortunately, things may have to come to an end like this. Um, I wish the circumstances were different, right? I mean, I was... I was invested in Luna. I was always very skeptical about a lot of things. I always share those thoughts in my Discord. Like even in my videos, right? A lot, of, a lot of people weren't happy about the fact that I was pessimistic about various things, or I was a cynic. I was always questioning things. And it was primarily for this reason. Like, I did not want to walk around with rose-colored glasses. But even in that case, it didn't stop me from losing what I did lose. It was enough for me to at least make sure that I didn't put a significant amount of my net worth into Luna because I knew the risks were there. But in terms of getting out at the right time, obviously, I failed in doing so. But with that being said, thank you for watching.